on World News Tonight. Storm surge. Hurricane Idalia causes significant losses and it sweeps across Florida before weakening to a storm. Disputed territories. Countries in unison reject China's newly published standard 2023 map. Fighting back. Major breakthrough in cancer medication as doctors discover a drug to counter pancreatic cancer. Once in a blue moon. Larger and brighter than a typical full moon, summer moon rises over Jerusalem city. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are joining us on World News. We start as territorial disputes in the South China Sea deepens. Malaysia says it will send a protest note to China over its newly published map that stakes claims over disputed territories following India's move, while Indonesia says it is seeking more details through its embassy in Beijing. China's Ministry of Natural Resources issued the China Standard Map Edition 2023, which lays claims over large swaths of South China Sea also disputed by Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines and Brunei, as well as several land areas in India. It features a 10-dash line with an additional dash to the east of Taiwan, a break from the usual 9-dash line Beijing has been using in recent years to stake its claim over the South China Sea. The MAPS release comes just ahead of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Grouping Summit in Indonesia and the Group of 20 Summit in India, where Chinese leaders are expected to attend. Malaysia's Foreign Minister Zamri Abdul Qadir said that the country will send a protest note to China following its claims on the South China Sea as outlined in the new map. Indonesia, which is not a claimant state, has not yet issued an official response over China's map that claims territory over Natuna Islet cluster that falls within its 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone. But it is also claimed by Beijing within the 9-dash line over the South China Sea, a crucial waterway vital to international shipping lanes and an area of increasing contestation between China and the US. India's foreign ministry spokesman reportedly said in a statement that India too has lodged a strong protest through diplomatic channels with the Chinese side on the so-called 2023 Standard Map of China. Weather alerts now. Hurricane Idalia swept through the northern part of the U.S. state of Florida, killing two people before it weakened to a tropical storm. President Joe Biden says no one can deny the impact of the climate crisis anymore. As Hurricane Idalia moved through the Big Bend region of northern Florida on Wednesday, it weakened to a tropical storm. But what was once a Category 3 hurricane caused massive flooding and damage in affected areas and left at least two people dead. Both victims had been involved in separate traffic accidents while driving during the massive storm. According to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, all eight of Florida's urban search and rescue teams had been deployed, while some 5,500 National Guardsmen were helping clear roads of debris. Thousands of repairmen are currently working to restore power in affected areas. The federal government meanwhile sent thousands of search and rescue personnel along with drinking water and ready to eat meals. Idalia has already left Florida, passed through the state of Georgia and is currently making its way up through the eastern South Carolina from where it's set to move off land and into the Atlantic Ocean. In response to the devastating hurricane, President Joe Biden said Wednesday that no one can deny the impacts of the climate crisis. I don't think anybody can deny the impact of the climate crisis anymore. Just look around. Historic floods, I mean historic floods, more intense droughts, extreme heat, significant wildfires have caused significant damage like we've never seen before. Biden earlier on Tuesday promised to assist Florida in any possible way, adding that he and Governor DeSantis remained in constant contact. Hurricane Idalia reached a wind speeds of up to 205 kilometers per hour at its peak, with officials saying the storm is the strongest to hit the Big Bend region in over 100 years. The White House says Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un have brokered foot-for-arms deals in a clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Four countries, including South Korea, have urged the North to halt the negotiations. 
The White House said on Wednesday that new intelligence shows Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un have swapped letters as Russia looks to North Korea for munitions for the war in Ukraine. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby highlighted that the latest finding comes just weeks after the visit of Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu to Pyongyang and that Russian and North Korean talks on weapons sales were advancing. It has also been determined that Russia was looking to broker a food for arms deal with North Korea in which Moscow would provide the North with food and other commodities in return for munitions from Pyongyang. Meanwhile, at the United Nations on Wednesday, the United States, the United Kingdom, South Korea and Japan urged North Korea to halt arms negotiations with Russia, adding that any Russian-North Korean arms deals would violate UN Security Council resolutions that prohibit all member states, including Russia, from buying or obtaining any arms from the North. In a joint statement delivered by U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield, she highlighted that this is not the first time Russia has moved to violate Security Council resolutions to pursue its illegal war against Ukraine. And Russia's pattern of behavior that flouts its responsibilities as a member of the Security Council is unacceptable. The United States pledged to take direct action by exposing and sanctioning individuals and entities working to facilitate arms deals between Russia and North Korea. In a string of military coups, now military officers in Gabon have declared they were seizing power from President Ali Bongo in a stunning coup, threatening the family's half-century rule over the Central African nation. Hundreds pour out on the streets of Gabon's capital, singing songs in celebration. Residents here in Libreville reacting to news the army has seized control. Earlier, soldiers announced election results from this past weekend's vote were null and void. We have decided to defend peace by putting an end to the current regime. To this end, the general elections of the 26th of August, 2023, and the truncated results are cancelled. The borders are closed until further notice. All the institutions of the republic are dissolved. Soldiers celebrated as coup leaders announced the country's president, who had just secured a third term in office, had been placed under house arrest. Ali Bongo is reportedly surrounded by his family and is being provided access to his doctors. Soldiers, meanwhile, read out a list of names, including the president's son, who had been arrested and detailed their crimes. High treason against national institutions. The mass siphoning of public funds. Organized financial wrongdoings on an international scale. Forgery and the use of forged documents. The Bongo family has been in control of Gabon for over half a century, with Ali Bongo in charge for the past 14 years. Saturday's election lacked international observers and saw internet services suspended, raising concerns over the transparency of the vote. The internet appears to have been restored on Wednesday once soldiers announced they had taken control. Moving on to the road to the White House. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has said that his Republican presidential opponent, Vivek Ramaswamy, would be very good as a possible vice president candidate. Trump called Indian-American Ramaswamy a really good guy and said he has got good energy. This endorsement comes amid speculation about who Trump might choose as his running mate in 2024 presidential elections. While Trump leads the lineup for the Republican nomination, many polls have positioned the 38-year-old multimillionaire and former biotech executive Ramaswamy in third place. The former president further stated that he would have to like a person who called him the best president in a generation. Ramaswamy's endorsement by Trump is expected to be a significant boost to his presidential campaign. Welcome back. Kiev was targeted by the most powerful barrage of missiles and drones since the spring, with two people reported dead, as Russia claimed it destroyed four Ukrainian boats in the Black Sea, carrying up to 50 soldiers. The most intense bombardment seen in months in Kiev, as Russia launched drones and missile attacks over the city. Ukrainian officials said the majority were shot down 
with the downed missiles falling on buildings, a park and a school. Several civilians were killed and injured by falling debris. The blast broke all the windows. The entry doors are broken as well. We were terribly scared. Pigs, that's what they are. It's not human what they're doing. There are no military objects here, nothing. Just an apartment block, a park. Earlier in the night, the sky lit up with explosions on the Russian side of the border as drones hit Peskov airport close to Russia's border with NATO member Estonia. State news agencies reported several transport planes were damaged. Authorities described the biggest nighttime drone attack on Russian soil since the war began 18 months ago. Russian officials also said a vast operation of drone attacks had been destroyed or downed across Bryansk, Kaluga, Orlov, Ryazan and Moscow regions. According to preliminary information, there are fortunately no casualties from the drone attacks. Nevertheless, Ukrainian drone attacks on civilian objects confirm the terrorist intentions of the Kyiv regime once again. The Russian foreign minister also said the wave of attacks would not go unpunished. We have some good news for you. Bright days ahead for pancreatic patients suffering from the fatal disease as doctors have put forth new medication to ease the medical condition. Jan Mumford had just given birth to her third child when she received a terrifying diagnosis, pancreatic cancer. It was scary and you don't know what is going to happen. 25 years on, she survived. Remarkable for someone suffering from one of Australia's deadliest cancers. A new successful treatment gives people so much hope. That's the aim of researchers at the Garvin Institute who have discovered a drug to treat pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, one of the cancer's most common and aggressive forms. Often diagnosed at a late stage, chemotherapy is the only treatment option. If we can now find a way to make chemotherapy better, patients that only have that option may benefit more. The drug, combined with chemotherapy, was found to improve the survival rate in mice by 35%. But importantly, what it also does is it leads to around about a 45% decrease in the spread of that tumour. It does so by targeting fibrosis, the scar-like tissue which forms around pancreatic cancer tumours. Chemotherapy struggles to penetrate fibrosis and can actually make it worse. We almost have a double whammy there, which is that not only is fibrosis part of the tumour to begin with, but the drugs that are designed to kill the tumour increase it further. The next step is clinical trials on humans next year, the same drug also undergoing patient studies for another cancer. The study is currently in bone marrow cancer. Is uh, We're just finishing the first stage, which has shown promising results. To have time is a gift. X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter, has lifted a ban on political advertising, though it says it will still prohibit the promotion of false information. The move comes as the 2024 election campaign season in the United States kicks off. It's only just seen the return of a familiar face. Now political ads are also coming back to the social network formerly known as Twitter. X, as it's now called, says it will allow candidates and parties to place advertising ahead of the 2024 presidential election. Before Elon Musk acquired the company in October, Twitter had banned all such content since 2019. Then in January, it started allowing so-called cause-based ads, which promote things like voter registration. It said it later planned to expand the types of permitted political ads. Now the network says it will ramp up its safety and elections team ahead of next year's poll. That follows questions about its readiness for the vote, after laying off many staff who worked on trust and safety. The new move should allow X to raise revenue, at a time when many other advertisers have fled. In the turmoil since Musk's takeover, some firms have been concerned that their material could appear next to inappropriate content. X says it will also create a global advertising transparency centre, that's meant to allow people to see which political ads are being promoted on the network. X says it will still prohibit ads that include false information or seek to undermine confidence in elections. Toyota is set to resume its production in Japan. 
the world's top selling car maker has not disclosed the reasons behind the production halt and a company spokesman was unable to say whether the glitch happened during a system update. Toyota's factories in Japan were back up and running on Wednesday. A day earlier, a major malfunction had halted all output at the firm's 14 plants there. It still isn't clear what caused the mega glitch, with Toyota saying it did not appear to be a cyber attack. The affected facilities account for about a third of output from the world's biggest automaker. Now the stoppage has put the spotlight on Toyota's famed just-in-time manufacturing system. That boosts efficiency by having parts arrive just as they are needed. But some fear it leaves the firm vulnerable to problems if logistics are disrupted. Sales figures out Wednesday suggest Toyota can't afford any more malfunctions. In July, they rose 8% to a record of over 859,000 vehicles. The Japanese giant has now reported year-on-year -year increases in global sales for six straight months. That highlights its recovery from last year's lockdowns and chip shortages. Numbers for August are expected to take a hit from the factory shutdown. Welcome back. For more news, let's take around the world in me. Former Energy Minister Grant Shapps replaced Ben Wallace as Britain's Defence Minister, a promotion for a man relied upon by the government as a good media communicator but lacking in direct experience of military. A nighttime fire ripped through a rundown five story building in Johansonburg that was occupied by homeless people and squatters, killing at least 73 people with emergency services expecting to see death tolls rise. South Korea's military has conducted large-scale outdoor maneuver exercises. This has been done as part of the Urgy Freedom Shield drills which South Korea and US troops began last week. China and Nicaragua signed a free trade agreement after year-long negotiations to enhance bilateral economic and trade cooperation. Mongolia made final preparations before Pope Francis's visit to the landlocked nation of around 3.3 million people the first visit by any pope to Mongolia. Pope Francis, who was originally invited by Mongolian president, is scheduled to arrive on Friday morning and depart on Monday. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by watching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. We're leaving you tonight in the sacred Jerusalem city where a rare blue supermoon lit up the sky. Thank you for watching. Good night.